Hi, it's Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo, the Lab, and Paul's Photo in the Creative Photo Academy. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's day 395 of our Be Creative series. I was out in our front yard this afternoon, and I walked in, and I saw that my wife's clivia here are just beautiful. And the thing about these plants is they're very delicate, and they don't the flowers don't last long, so you really got to work quickly. So I love the beautiful late afternoon light, so we're in the shade here, and it gives us a nice soft light for macro photography. We're here in the middle of the macro magic class, so I wanted to give a lesson to the, to the macro group to show what it takes to do a great macro photo. So the first part is you have to use your eye. So I walked up and I saw how nice the clivia looked, and there's that little pattern of three flowers on the left, and I wanted them. So my first exploration is to find the right altitude. So you can see I've got the camera set up, and I did that. You know, I pre-set it up. I know you didn't need to see me set up the tripod and everything, but I just came in and found that I want this angle. And I know that with the 70 to 200 lens, I'm about this far away from my subject with the extension tubes on. Now, how do I know that? Because I've tested and practiced. Why would I use the 70 to 200 lens with extension tubes? rather than a macro lens like the 100 or 105 macro because I'm not doing a super close-up it's not just the flower here and by using this the 70 to 200 gives me a greater working distance and it's going to compress and flatten the image so uh, you notice I have the 70 to 200 with the Z72 with the extension tubes on my Gitzo tripod with the ProMaster macro rail and if you come in look Cheryl real close here you can see I've auto-focused on this spot right there, right? But if I want to get in closer with the macro rail, I just slide in and lock it down, and there I am closer, or I can pull back. Now I wanted to pull back because I wanted this, you see the top of the flower right there, as almost a horizon in the picture to set the image. Now, I like the way this looks. I don't like, I've got some dead leaves and stuff in the background back there. And I could go in and cut your plants, which I know you're not going to do. Or, I brought a hand towel, a dark blue hand towel, which I'm going to throw into the scene. All right, so I'm going to clean up a little bit here. But then I'm just going to toss this in there to cover those dirty, those, the, the bad plants there. And what is it going to do? Look what it did to the background. So you still have the green, but now it's dark. And when I process the image, you're not going to see the blue. It's going to be almost black. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm also, I'm, I know you're not going to like this, darling, but I'm going to take one of these guys here and just throw it in there. So there's more green in that background, right? No, nope, I don't like it. It's got to go this way, right? So spending a little bit of time and effort to get the image right. This little corner here, I don't like that. So I could either pluck that little flower or with Photoshop later on, I'm just going to retouch that out. Or you know what? I can just bring that leaf down there like that and cover it. No, nope, it didn't work. All right. Well, I think we're pretty good right now. Oops, I don't like this one here. Look at that. I'm just going to cover that extra red in the back right there. All right, so there's a lot that goes into this macro photography to get it right. And we haven't even talked about a setting yet on the camera. So I'm going to make sure my focus point is where I want it. So right there, my focus point right on the yellow... I can never remember those are pistols or stamens. So I'm going to turn the display back on. I'm F11, 400 ISO, 15th of a second. You see I've got my remote release because I don't want to touch it because I don't want there to be any movement at all. So I want a razor sharp image. Look at that. Now because I don't know what it's going to look like, you can see the depth of field there, right? So I'm actually going to shoot this also with a wider opening at F5.6. And I'm going to shoot it at f22. 
Now at F22, I gotta be careful. I'm a quarter of a second there. I have to wait. So you feel a breath of wind. Look at the flower. The, 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 the leaves are whistling. I mean, they always do this whenever I go to F22. It always happens. See, now we just have to wait. You guys get to hear me talk a little bit more. Right there. Wait. Hold it. Hold it. Right. Now. 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 I'm shooting a bunch because I don't know which one is going to work. Right? Beautiful. Now, I'm also going to drop the, the lens down and I'm going to try a different angle. Right, so you notice I'm dropping the tripod like like three inches, right? Not a lot, because now I'm going to move over to this side, and don't go more right in on the flowers. There they are, right there, like that. Look at that, right? Notice I love the use of the collar there on the t 70 to 200 lens. Another reason why I like to do this with the 70 to 200 is you've got the collar that swings. And now I can focus right there again, right? Got the focus point right here, F22. I'm going to shoot. Well, look at the wind, right? Wind, wind, right? I'm going to go to F11. I'm going to go to f5.6 because I just want to see what it looks like, right? I know I'm going to focus right here because that's the main subject in my picture. That's the flower that I want to highlight. But I just want to see how much background I want in the picture. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Right? So what we did, we just worked through a little macro scene to let you see how it goes. So you got to get down on your hands and knees. you got to work the scene, work the subject. And that's how you're going to get the picture that you want. Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo, the Lab at Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. Have a great day and make a picture and share it with us. I'd love to see it. We'll see you tomorrow for our next day of Be Creative.